the concept of energy. Energy is actually a very difficult thing to describe, at least well. People will define energy as the ability to do work. That's probably the best definition I can come up with, but it's not a very good one. I mean, what is it really? Well, I can give you forms of energy. The energy can, due to an object's motion is kinetic energy. The energy due to an object's height is what we call gravitational potential energy. You can store energy in a spring or a rubber band. All of those have the potential to do work. Of course, you have solar energy. You have energy stored, say, in chemical energy stored in um, gunpowder, stuff like that. So it can take, it can be stored in different forms. It could also be, again, the energy of motion. We are going to study specifically mechanical energy. So, since, again, we're studying mechanics, mechanical energy, the total mechanical energy of a system, the total mechanical energy of a system, we use the letter E to represent that. Energy will be measured in joules. Its SI unit is joules. And we're only at the moment looking at mechanical energy. Well, we are going to focus on two types of mechanical energy. We're going to look at kinetic energy. Which, again, is the energy of motion, the energy associated with the moving object. We will use a Ke to represent that. And the equation for kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. 1 half times the mass in kilograms times the speed squared. The speed has to be in meters per second. The units will be joules. That's the energy of an object in motion. An interesting side note is that energy is a relative concept because it depends on what you measure the speed relative to. Is it the speed relative to the road you're driving on, you're driving 55 miles per hour relative to the road? Is it the speed as you're driving 55 miles per hour relative to the road? If you measured your speed relative to like the sun, then you're traveling like 60,000 miles per hour. It's a relative concept, and so that's a relative concept. Depends what you measure it relative to. By the same token, gravitational potential energy, gravitational potential energy is also a relative concept because it depends where you measure the height from. Where are you measuring, say, the height of this whiteboard marker? This whiteboard marker has the potential to fall, and in the process, it's going to gain kinetic energy, and it could do some useful work. But where do you measure that height from? Well, the height could be measured from the floor. The height could be measured from the ground floor. The height could be measured from the ceiling. There are different places you can measure it from. And so you would get different values for potential energy. What you'll see as we get further into this, it's not the, the value of the potential energy that matters. It's how it changes. We're interested in changes in potential energy. The symbol for gravitational potential energy, that's the stored energy in an object by virtue of its position in a gravitational field, its position in space. The equate, well, the symbol is U. We tend to use U for uh, potential energy. It varies, but I use a U. And then a subscript G, subscript G for gravity. And the equation is M times G, M for mass in kilograms, G, 9.8 meters per second squared here on Earth, times Y, that's its vertical position in, vertical position in space. Some people use an H, M, G, H. I prefer a Y. It works out better in our equations. So kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy, those are the energies we're going to, to focus on. The total mechanical energy of a system is the sum of the kinetic energy and the potential energy at any given moment. Now, 
I'm going to give you one of the common sense equations that we use in physics. E, uh, so you have E and then kinetic energy and potential energy. I'm going to erase this. This is one of the most useful equations there is. I want to use an I for initial instead of a sub-zero. So the total initial momentum of a system plus the net work done on it equals the final energy of a system. This is common sense written in letters which just confuses everybody. But all this is saying is that an object has a certain amount of energy at some moment in time. Then something happens. That something might increase its energy level, it might decrease its energy level, or maybe not change it. Let's say it increases its energy level. Well, you add the energy it had plus the, the amount that was added, you've got a new number, a new amount of energy. Or maybe this is acting against it, like friction, making its energy go down. So it had a certain amount of energy. The energy's, energy's taken out because of friction or whatever. And so now it has less energy. That's all this says. It is an incredibly useful equation. Well, what's E? Remember that E is the total mechanical energy. So it's the sum of the kinetic energy plus the potential energy at any given moment. So if we break this down into those two, so the initial condition when you first meet the problem, how much kinetic energy does it have and potential energy? That's what this is, those two things. And then you add the net work, which you have to calculate off to the side. That would equal the final energy, which is made up of those two, the final kinetic and the final potential. Remember that kinetic energy is 1 half m vi squared. Potential energy is, and these are the equations, so mg times y. And then I'm going to leave this as net work for the moment. This would be 1 half m vf squared plus mgyf. All I've done, there are only two equations, m, half mv squared and mgy for potential energy here, kinetic energy, potential energy. Total initial mechanical energy is the sum of those two. Well, what are those equations? That's the equation for that. That's the, that's the equation for that. Final energy is the sum of its final kinetic and potential. What's the equation for that? It's right there. What's the equation for that? It's right there. We can solve all sorts of problems with that.